The authors have no financial interest in the subject matter of this video. Beauty happens in the everyday. Beauty is all around us. You just need an eye for it. Fortunately for us ophthalmologists, the eye itself is our muse. We approach the eye like an art piece. Even the ones ravaged by disease seem hauntingly beautiful. When I first saw Vincent van Gogh's painting, The Starry Night, I didn't think of the night or the sky in the conventional way. What struck me about the painting was how similar it looked to a fluorescein stained parched ocular surface of a dry eye patient. It is amazing to me how two people completely different in terms of their era and their training could see similar patterns and colors in totally different things. We as modern day clinicians tend to take things for granted. We forget that we are standing on the shoulders of two centuries of medical experience and scientific research. Fluorescein is one such piece of wisdom passed down to us through the ages. Fluorescein by itself is a fascinating substance. It's a piece of magic at your fingertips. A red-orange vital dye, it is known in chemistry circles as fluorescein sodium. A member of the xanthine group of dyes, it is a highly fluorescent chemical compound synthesized from the petroleum derivatives resorcinol and phthalic anhydride. The dye was first synthesized in 1871 by Adolf von Bayer, who later received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work in organic dyes. The fascinating property of fluorescein is that it absorbs blue light with peak excitation at wavelengths between 465 to 490 nanometers and in turn emits light at yellow-green wavelengths of 520 to 530 nanometers. This phenomenon is fluorescence. It is a form of luminescence. The eye, apart from being a thing of incredible beauty, is also a complex, delicate optical system. And essential to its optimal functioning is the first refractive surface, the precorneal tear film. The tear film is the silent and unseen hero responsible for our vision. Fluorescein staining makes it prominent. Its assessment possible. Fluorescein not only shows us the health of the tear film, it shows its disease too. Helps us decipher why a quiet eye with adequate tears is still in pain. The instability of the tear film may be the cause. The unstable tears may indicate mucin deficient dry eyes or they may highlight the altered lipids in an evaporative dry eye leading to toxic tears which add to the inflammatory cycle that is at the core of the dry eye disease. An eye with severe dry eye due to primary or secondary Sjogren syndrome cries out for attention via the fluorescein. Without ocular surface staining, one cannot understand the extent of the disease and its severity. Fluorescein can be essential for the complete ophthalmic assessment of a normal subject as well. It will highlight the tear meniscal myers and help us assess the intraocular pressure. The versatility of the stain is such that it can at appropriate times give us a glimpse of the past and on other occasions help us anticipate the future. It may tell you exactly how many cuts the cornea suffered when a broken glass hit it and how the contour of the cornea altered and also be able to anticipate any problems that subtle graft host junction irregularity can cause you in your grafted patient, like a warning of incoming trouble. It doesn't always have to be a positive stain that clinches the diagnosis. When a patient with a failed graft keeps complaining of watering, a simple touch of fluorescein will reveal the bulla that's stirring up all the trouble. Take a look at this infiltrate which on first look appears to be an innocuous marginal keratitis, secondary to lid margin disease. A dab of fluorescein tells you, look closely my friend, things are not always as they seem. First impressions can be lethal. What looks like a large suture related infiltrate, the lack of an epithelial defect on fluorescein makes me rethink my original assumption. A gentle reminder of the old history of stromal viral keratitis in this patient. This simple test helps me get away with this scar 
at the end of the intensive antiviral therapy. Our job isn't always complex. It can be taking care of the obvious. It's obviously a metallic foreign body sitting on the cornea staring at you. But then there are times when the cornea looks clear to the eye. But Floresian will highlight those fine scratches that prompt you to look beneath the upper lid and hunt for the elusive foreign body. The lids leave their imprint on the cornea in other ways as well. The superior corneal staining will indicate the presence of mast cell engorged papillae, waiting to breach the corneal epithelium, leading to a Shields ulcer if not treated aggressively. Aggressive treatment, with not just medical but surgical means as well, may be warranted in a chemical injury that presents with an ocular surface so globally devoid of epithelial cover. Fluorescein will also help show us signs of good healing. It will also remind us to pay attention to not just the cornea, but to the conjunctival insult as well, while reassuring us with concave healing edges for defects responding well to topical medications. Chronic chemical injury sequelae would need one to perform limbal transplants. Fluorescein will aid in their post-operative assessment as well. A well epithelized surface at day 8 will be as good as a pat on the back for a job well done. A patient presenting with a shallow anterior chamber with guttering peripheral corneal ulceration can lead to a suspicion of a leak. When even the forced Seidel's test turns out negative, it is a relief for both the doctor and the patient. On the other hand, a corneal infiltrate that seems to have healed well may have a leaking fistula that won't be indicated by anything but the Seidel's test, showing you a gush of fluid causing the fluorescein to wash out. Hindu and Buddhist lore for long have had the concept of the third eye. According to scripture, Lord Shiva has three eyes. The right eye is the sun, the left one is the moon, and the third eye is at the middle of the forehead. It is believed that he uses the third eye to see beyond the apparent and protect the good ones from the evil doers. All the evil and ignorance will vanish as the third eye opens. It is the eye of wisdom and knowledge. Fluorescein staining helps us see exactly what we need to, a bit like the Lord Shiva's third eye of wisdom. Mythological metaphors aside, the human eye is a perfect combination of complexity married to simplicity. Fluorescein ensures that our assessment lives up to this profound work of art and gives it the care it so richly deserves.